We welcome an NBA reporter, Tim McMahon. Tim, I kind of want to take on the uh, role of the Mavericks fan, maybe the season ticket holder who's hung in there for 80 games this year. How does the organization come to this decision to essentially say, we're not going for it? Ultimately, this was Mark Cuban's call, and I would love to be able to explain to you what exactly changed from Wednesday night uh, until this morning when they made the call to pull the plug. But Mark Cuban did not reply to my attempts to get his explanation. Now, I can tell you that the general logic is very simple. They had no control over their own destiny in terms of making the play-in. They had no confidence that they could do any kind of damage if they got into the play-in, much less somehow stumbled into the playoffs. The one thing they have some control over are their lottery odds. They were tied for the Bulls for the 10th best lottery odds entering tonight. They broke that tie. They are alone in the number 10 spot. That's important. The Mavericks owe the New York Knicks a top 10 protected pick as the final piece to the, whoops, Chris Stapp's Porzingis trade. <laughs> and if they don't keep that pick, that is a massive blow to the long-term hopes of trying to build a contender around Luka Doncic and we'll see, hopefully, Kyrie Irving. Yeah, who was the big addition to this team. And when Kyrie and Luka were on the floor together, the record was 5-11 and 11 this year. Jason Kidd, of course, was asked about the possibility of the team keeping Kyrie beyond this season. Oh, uh, if I was a betting man, I, would, I guess I would say he would be back. Why would I say he wouldn't? Um, so confident is that that's too strong. I think we hope, I think um, Cuban made that clear. He's the number one priority uh, to, to have him come back. So I would, I would second that. Tim, how do you see Dallas handling things as it relates to keeping Kyrie Irving in a Mavericks uniform? Well, Mark Cuban certainly the other night did make it clear that Kyrie Irving will be the Mavs' top priority this summer. What does that mean? I don't know. Jalen Brunson was their top priority going into last summer. <laughs> I asked Cuban straight up, you've got Kyrie's bird rights. You can give him a longer contract than anybody else. You can give him a larger contract than anybody else. Will the Mavericks be outbid for Kyrie? Cuban was noncommittal. He said, I guess there's always too high of a price to pay, depending. He mentioned the new CBA, some of the restrictions on roster building. That would be a very difficult way to go into contract negotiations with Kyrie Irving, who, let's be honest, he felt disrespected by the way Brooklyn approached contract negotiations or extension negotiations. We saw how that turned out. Plan B would be to try to use those bird rights in a sign-and-trade deal to get another star caliber play in return. That's very difficult because it requires his cooperation, another team's cooperation. Let's just be blunt. If the Mavericks aren't able to re-sign Kyrie Irving, that is another massive blow to the long-term goal of trying to build a contender around Luka before it's too late. A team that had a fabulous run a season ago when they go out and get Kyrie Irving, and there's a whole lot of hopes, and then a bizarre ending to things here in 2023. Tim McMahon with us tonight from Dallas. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.